Hi, welcome to another edition of Fitness and Wellness for a Lifetime. I'm your host, Steve Ball. Today's topic is nutrition, and joining us are two registered dietitians, Melinda Himmelgarn and Ann Cohen. Melinda is going to take us on a tour of the supermarket, while Ann is going to show us some kitchen tips. What you got cooking for us, Ann? Hi, Steve. I have great ideas for some delicious homemade meals. Hi, Melinda. What you got in store for us today? Well, we're going to be going on a grocery tour, Steve. In other words, what we're going to do is try to help consumers get the most nutrients for their dollar. We'll start in the produce aisle and we'll travel throughout and look at how we can spend the least amount of money and get the most nutrition for our dollars. Do you have any specific tips? Sure, there are some specific tips that everyone should know before they go to the grocery store. First and foremost, go with a list. When we have a list, we're sure to get everything we intended to buy and we're least likely to pick up things that we don't intend to buy. Plus, it'll save us a second trip if we forget something. Number two, shop on a full stomach, never when you're hungry. The problem with shopping when we're hungry is a lot of foods that may not be in our best interest all of a sudden become very tempting. Number three, look for generics. These are store brands, and typically they cost less money than national brands. When we buy a national brand, we're also paying for national advertising, which can be quite expensive. Another tip would be to use coupons wisely. Only use them if they are for products that you already buy. Many times we see a coupon and we think, sure, we'll buy the product, but then because we don't have experience with the product, we don't know how to use it, and it ends up going to waste. Another strategy is to shop the perimeter of the store. That's where we're going to find most of our fresh foods, milk, the dairy products, fruits and vegetables, lean meats, and breads, typically you find them around the exterior or the perimeter of the store. Also, be careful of where products are displayed. End cap displays, for example, may not be a bargain, but they catch our eye and we tend to buy products that are displayed at those end spots. Also, be alert to the products that are there right when we check out. Those are designed for impulse buys. Also, where a product is placed on a shelf is very important. We tend to want to purchase those products that are right at eye level, but many times a bargain may be on one of those lower or upper shelves. Okay, Melinda, are you ready to take us on the tour now? Yeah, let's go. Mm. Prepared foods tend to be higher in fat and calories than those we make at home. Avoid fried foods and those served with thick, creamy gravies. Instead, go to the deli case and order a lean meat and cheese sandwich on whole grain bread. Melinda's right, Steve. The grocery store does have a lot of ready-to-eat food, but you can also prepare food at home, maybe even in a less expensive way. Today I made whole wheat pasta. Let's see how easy it is to put together a dinner using whole wheat pasta. I've drained the whole wheat pasta, I'll prepare it now by putting it on the plate. To this I'm going to add some sautéed spinach. I sautéed the spinach in olive oil with some slices of garlic. We'll add that to the pasta. So with a little olive oil and the spinach spread around the top of the pasta, we have a, a very healthful pasta dinner. The whole wheat pasta with sautéed spinach and garlic is delicious, Steve, but you could also add a red sauce to it and make it even better. When I look for pasta sauce, I look for sauces that are low in sodium, so check the Nutrition Facts label before you buy. Steve, this is a nutritious and delicious, inexpensive, ready-to-eat dinner. Mm. Twenty years ago, it would have been impossible to find ready-made salad bars in the supermarket but with today's busy working families, we can find ready-made salad bars in just about every supermarket. Let's take a look at some of our options. When you're making your selections at the salad bar, think color. The darker colors, the better. So the dark green leafy spinach, the dark green salad greens, carrots, broccoli, loaded with nutrients that help prevent cancer and heart disease. Same thing with the cabbage. This is a cruciferous vegetable, very helpful in helping to prevent those chronic killer diseases such as heart disease and cancer. 
Tomatoes, a wonderful vegetable, tasty, delicious, nutritious. They contain a compound called lycopene, which we think helps prevent prostate cancer and certainly can help prevent heart disease. There are so many salad dressings to choose from. The important thing to remember is to choose what you like, but choose a small amount. I like to fill my plate with my salad greens, then put a little bit of salad dressing on the side and dip the salad into the dressing as opposed to putting the dressing all on top of the salad. Some salad bar options appear to be drenched in salad dressing. Those are going to deliver a lot of extra fat and calories. Try to avoid those, but if you really like them, remember small portion sizes. Mm. This is a kid-friendly display for snack cakes, very appealing to children. However, we've seen a drastic increase in childhood obesity in this country, and products such as these are part of the problem. Let's take a look at one of the boxes and see what's really inside these attractive cakes. Let's take a look at these first three ingredients. Dextrose, which is a sugar, anything that ends in O-S-E is a sugar. Vegetable shortening, which includes partially hydrogenated soybean and cottonseed oils. Now be careful of those partially hydrogenated fats. That's where we find trans fats, which are particularly heart unhealthy, followed by enriched flour. So the first three ingredients are the ones in greatest concentration. So basically you've got sugar, fat, and flour, or refined flour. Now remember that heart disease begins in childhood. So we don't want to give our children products that contain mostly sugar and hydrogenated fats. I wouldn't bring a product like this into my home for my children. Mm. Look at all the choices we have in the bread aisle. It's hard to know which loaf to select. The rule of thumb is to always choose 100% whole wheat bread. Now here's a loaf of 100% whole wheat bread. That's what we're looking for, whole wheat. How do we know that this indeed is 100% whole wheat bread? We check the ingredient label. Sometimes you have to work to find it, but here it is and you'll see ingredients, whole wheat flour. That's the critical first ingredient. Now, if you look at the nutrition facts panel, you'll see that one slice or one serving contains three grams of dietary fiber. We want to choose breads that contain at least two grams, two grams or more, of dietary fiber per slice. Now, there are other options on the shelf that can be confusing. For example, here's a loaf of bread that says buttermilk wheat. Is that 100% wheat bread? No. And how do we know? We look at the ingredient label, and here we see the first ingredient is unbleached enriched wheat flour. So enriched wheat flour is not the same as 100% whole wheat flour, or simply whole wheat flour. We want to see that combination of whole wheat. All breads really in the grocery store are wheat breads. Mm. Look at all this beautiful produce. Fruits and vegetables are loaded with compounds that we call phytonutrients. These are powerful antioxidants that can help prevent cancer and heart disease. We want to make sure to eat a variety of fruits and vegetables every day, at least five servings every day. Potatoes are a great source of vitamin C and potassium. And they're also a great quick meal. Pop one in the microwave, top it with some shredded cheese, some chili, some salsa. Also, sweet potatoes are a great source of vitamin A, or beta-carotene. Powerful antioxidants. What I like to do is either bake, broil, steam, or boil potatoes as opposed to frying them. Also, remember the fat we add to potatoes adds a lot of extra calories. So, be careful not to add too much butter or sour cream. This is the organic produce section. Certified organic produce means that it has not been grown with any sort of pesticide. It costs more money, however, and if you can't afford it, the important thing to remember is that all produce needs to be washed thoroughly under cold running water. Mm. Americans consume over 50 gallons of soft drinks per person per year. That contributes a lot of calories to the diet with very few nutrients. 
And that's why we're very concerned about soft drink consumption with regard to childhood obesity. Children get calories, but not the nutrients they need for healthy bone development and regular growth. The Missouri Dental Association has a campaign called Stop the Pop. They want children not to drink soft drinks, not only because of the obesity problem, but because they contribute to poor dental health. Whether we're drinking diet soft drinks or regular soft drinks, both are highly acidic and contribute to dental decay. Bottled waters have made a huge splash in the consumer beverage market. However, while they're better than soft drinks, they're not always very cost effective. It's always cheaper to get water from the tap than it is from a bottle. If your water is not safe to drink, then bottled water is a perfect option. However, most municipal water supplies are indeed safe. Check with your county health department to find out if there's a problem with your drinking water. Bottled waters have become a substitute for cola wars. Coke makes Dasani, Pepsi makes Aquafina, and a lot of market research goes into selling those products with emotion attached. Bottled waters are certainly better than soft drinks. However, realize that you're spending a premium for bottled water. Then there are products like this that contain a vitamin supplement. Essentially, it's water plus a vitamin pill. And it's very expensive, close to a dollar per bottle. It would be cheaper to drink regular water and take a vitamin pill on the side. Another issue with regard to bottled water is the fact that they don't contain fluoride. Most cities have fluoridated water, which helps prevent tooth decay. So if you are drinking bottled water on a regular basis, make sure you speak with your dentist and ask about fluoridation. Mm. Snack crackers are very popular, but they're not very heart healthy. Let's take a look at the label. This is a box of wheat thins. You might think that they were a whole grain product since the word wheat is in the title. But if you look over here at the label, you'll see under total carbohydrate that a serving of these crackers only contribute one gram of dietary fiber. We're looking for grain products that contribute at least two grams of fiber per serving. Another ingredient that we want to look for on these snack crackers is what kind of fat is included in them. Partially hydrogenated vegetable oil is where we find trans fat. Those are the kinds of fats that are heart unhealthy. In other words, they raise our cholesterol levels even though they're from a vegetable source. So cholesterol isn't in the product, but the partially hydrogenated vegetable oils raise blood cholesterol and snack crackers are a major source of trans fat or partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. And if you read the label, partially hydrogenated soybean oil. That's the source of trans fat. Mm. Beware the cookie aisle. There are some surprises here. First of all, certainly we can understand that there would be a lot of calories in cookies. But what many people may not understand is that the reduced fat cookies may not be such a big calorie savings. Let's take a look. Here's a product that's reduced fat, a typical chocolate chip cookie. Here's a product that's a regular for comparison. The regular cookies, one serving, which are two cookies, contain eight grams of fat and 140 calories. Two cookies, 140 calories. That's the regular product. Now let's look at the reduced fat variety. Same serving size, two cookies, but here the calories are 130, which means that you're only saving 10 calories. But what happens is many times when we see the reduced fat label, we think, oh, well, I can eat all I want. There's another surprise in this aisle. Snackwell's cookies are come at a very high premium. They're pretty expensive compared to the other brands. But if we look at the label, we might be surprised. A serving size, three cookies, has 150 calories. So you see that the comparison between the calories is really not that different. The other thing to keep in mind is that cookies are a source of partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. That's the type of fat that we want to stay away from because it contributes trans fat to our diet. Anytime you see partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, think trans fat, think not healthy for my heart. Mm. 
Breakfast cereal is a really fast, nutritious breakfast, especially for families who are working, the kids are off to school. You want to eat something that's quick and easy. That's where breakfast cereal comes in. But there's a secret to choosing the best ones. Let's take a look at this for example. Here's a product that says toasted whole wheat flakes. What we want to do is find the product that contains at least two grams of fiber per serving and contains no more than eight grams of sugar or simple carbohydrate per serving. So let's take a look at the label. Per serving, this product contributes three grams of dietary fiber to our diets. That's good. Passes the fiber test. The next, we want to look at sugar, and it's four grams. There are four grams of sugar in each teaspoon. And we never want to go over eight grams per serving. Now notice that these kinds of cereals are at eye level for me as an adult. Now let's see what happens when we see the cereal aisle from a child's perspective. Get down on your knees and see the kind of cereals that now become in eye view. Here's one, a Kellogg's Disney combination. This is a powerful marketing technique because children are automatically attracted to these kinds of Disney characters. However, if we take a look at the nutrition label, we'll see that this kind of product really isn't in the best interest of our children. Remember the rule, the secret for picking out the best cereals. We don't want any more than eight grams of sugar per serving. That's the equivalent of two teaspoons of sugar. Well, let's take a look at this product, Mickey's Magics. Each serving contains 15 grams of sugar. That's almost twice the recommended amount, or close to four teaspoons of extra sugar per serving of cereal. That doesn't contribute to our children's health. It contributes to childhood obesity, and it also contributes to tooth decay. If you look at the fiber, you'll also see that it only contains one gram of fiber per serving. So it fails that test too. Remember, we're looking for two grams of fiber per serving and eight grams of sugar or less. Now another product that may look like it has more sugar than it really should are cereals that contain fruit. Don't be alarmed. Even though the sugar quantity is going to exceed the rule, it's all right because manufacturers do not separate added sugar from the sugar that's contributed by fruit. So anytime you have a product that contains fruit in it, like a raisin bran, you're going to find that it's got more sugar, but really it's okay. It's just fruit sugar. So this particular product contains 18 grams of sugar. Now, even though it appears that this product contains a lot of extra sugar, most of it is coming from the fruit, and that's okay. Now, Pop-Tarts have won the hearts of children, but we can do the same type of cereal test on this product. We want two grams of fiber per serving and no more than eight grams of sugar per serving. So let's see what we've got. Each serving, which is one pastry, contains only one gram of fiber, so it fails that test. It also contains 19 grams of sugar, which is close to five teaspoons of sugar per pastry. That's too much. Now, if you've got a child that's in a hurry or maybe doesn't even like to eat breakfast, instant breakfast beverages or breakfast drinks are a wonderful alternative. Mm. Let's take a look at some different orange juice products on the market. We've got several to choose from. Sunny D or Sunny Delight looks like orange juice. It's sold alongside orange juice products, but if we look at the back label, the Nutrition Facts panel, you see that it only contains 5% juice. That's what we want to be looking for, the percent juice in juice products. Let's take a look at a better one. This product tells you right across the label, 100% juice. That's what we want to bring home to our families. Even juice products that are fortified with extra vitamins and minerals are never as nutritious as 100% fruit juice. Mm.
Consumers have a lot of questions about margarine and butter. Which one is best? First we hear that butter is heart unhealthy. Then later we learn that margarine is heart unhealthy. Which one is it? Well, butter is an animal product. Therefore, it contains cholesterol. Does it raise cholesterol levels? Yes, it contains saturated fat and cholesterol. So, chances are it will contribute to a high cholesterol problem. Margarine is made from vegetable oil. It doesn't contain cholesterol, but guess what? It contributes to a blood cholesterol problem. Why is that? Because margarine, especially the stick hard kinds of margarine, contains something called partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. That simply is a process, the hydrogenation process, takes a liquid vegetable oil and makes it into a solid form. That's where we find trans fat. And even though trans fat itself doesn't contain cholesterol, it raises blood cholesterol levels. So neither one is really very heart healthy. If you do use butter, use small quantities. Remember that both butter and margarine have the same number of calories, nine calories per gram, making fat the highest calorie source in our diet. Now let's compare a stick form of margarine to a squeezable form. Read labels and look for those that specifically say no trans fat. Those are the healthiest kinds of margarines you can choose. You'll start to see more labels in the marketplace making statements about trans fat because the research is really just starting to come out showing just how detrimental trans fat is to our overall health, especially heart health. Now there are two margarine products on the market today. One is called Take Control and the other is called Benacol. These margarines contain something called plant stenol esters, and they really do lower blood cholesterol levels. They cost more money than other margarines, but if you've got high blood cholesterol and your doctor's told you to lower it, these might be a good investment in your health. Mm. Now, olive oil is a great oil to use in cooking. This is considered a heart-healthy oil. The calories are the same, whether we're talking about butter, margarine, or vegetable oils of any kind. It's just that this particular oil tends to have a lot of monounsaturated fat, which is healthy for our hearts. Mm. There are lots of different choices in the dairy case. The important thing to remember, among all the different kinds of milks, is that the calcium stays the same, only the fat differs. So for example, one cup of skim milk has as much calcium as one cup of whole milk, but there's a lot less fat in the skim milk. So the recommendations for health are to choose milks that have less fat. Many parents ask about chocolate milk versus white milk. Both kinds of milk contribute just as much calcium. The important thing to remember is to choose chocolate milk that's a low fat variety. But in terms of your child's bone health, both the chocolate milk and the white milk contribute equal amounts of calcium. Mm. Let's take a look at Lunchables. These are brilliantly marketed to our children, and many times your children will ask for them, but we've got to be firm as parents and say, no, these are not in your best interest, and they're not environmentally friendly either. For one, there's excessive packaging. For the other, let's take a look at the kinds of food products that are included in these products, such as hot dogs and soda. This is not a nutritious lunch for our children. You're much better off saving your money, saving your children's health, and making a lunch from home. I agree with Melinda about the Lunchables. There is an alternative to making a lunch for your child at home that can be just as much fun. Here's an idea. Take a bag of tuna the night before. Add a little pickle relish, a small amount of mayonnaise. That tuna put in the refrigerator in a container can be taken out in the morning, popped into the lunchbox with a small bag of ready prepared carrots that can be used as fun sticks to eat the tuna. And finally, some strawberries for dessert, bagged ready to go, add that to the lunch. Finally, add a cooler to keep the food chilled and safe. And one last thing that you can't get from a Lunchable, a note on the napkin from mom. Hope your day's going well, have fun, love mom. Now there's a homemade, healthier, less expensive alternative to a Lunchable. Well, what if my child doesn't care for tuna? Do you have any other suggestions for us? Well, another alternative is a sandwich. 
I like to start with 100% whole wheat bread. Add some lean turkey from the deli. Put those two together with lettuce and a sandwich can be made the night before. So you can take it out of the refrigerator and pop it in the lunchbox in the morning. Add to that some cherry tomatoes already packaged the night before and also grapes washed and packaged the night before. Such a quick way to make a lunch. One last thing, add the cooler so the food will be safe. And a note from mom again. This time, you're a great kid. Love, mom. That's another healthy lunch you can make for your kids from home. Mm. Let's talk about high protein foods for a minute. Meat, fish, poultry, dried beans, eggs, peanut butter, all of those foods contribute protein to our diet. When choosing meat and poultry products, remember small portions, lean choices. For your heart's sake, choose at least one to two servings of heart healthy fish each week. I hope you've enjoyed the grocery store tour today, Steve. You know, how we eat really impacts our health. All of the chronic diseases that affect Americans, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, even some cancers, can be impacted by how we eat and the lifestyle choices that we make. So eat well and be well. Thanks, Melinda, for that wonderful supermarket tour. And to you, Ann, for all the kitchen tips. This has been another segment of Fitness and Wellness for a Lifetime. I'm Steve Ball.